My loyal subjects, I am concerned. I, I, of necessity, I am no stranger to war. Indeed, I am no stranger to civil strife, for was it not? Some years since, when the pilgrimage of grace, when those foolish fellows on the north did walk, indeed march, a great body of fellows from the north did aim to come south and force me, your king, to do of their bidding. I did have to deal with those fellows in a harsh way, but never, never have I ever wanted naught but peace within my realm. Do I not oft require of you to live in peace, unity and concord, one with another? These words do trip from my tongue, time upon time. And yet, my loyal subjects, I am indeed concerned. There are many people who have come to this land of England seeking of its safety. When you do look out across Europe and what is for us in my time the known world, there are many who have come to England to live in peace and unity and concord to escape the fears of other tyrannies and regimes. Thus, in my England, you will see all manner of fellows, people of foreign blood, people of different religious groups, people, dare I say, of different skin. And yet in my time, no one, no one paid any heed to who one was or where one was from. Indeed, two of my wives were foreign. The Spanish cow, Aragon, a great Spanish princess. Indeed, my fourth wife, the, the ugly Flanders and mare, she, she was German of descent. Uh, my wife, Berlin, the poisoning of witch and whore, she was so French in her manner that many even today to perceive that she was French. And when, and when I did set to marry that good English woman, uh, Mistress Jane Seymour, many did say publicly, should not their king marry a princess from a far off and distant foreign land? Thus, you'll observe that in my England, no heed was paid to origin. My painter is German. Indeed, there are many fellows who, perhaps in your time, would be called foreigners, who do sojourn within my courts. There are fellows of dark skin, who are even in my courts. Perhaps the most obvious, for he does accompany me on many of my public events, a state trumpeter, John Blank, a blackamoor. He is a most proficient musician. In fact, his image does appear on the court rolls. Indeed, the cheeky fellow that he was. He did entreat me for an increase in his wage, for he was so good at his art. An increase I was pleased to accede to. But it concerns me, I. I have oft made reference to a passing necromancer, for as you are aware, I do, for my health, remain yet still in isolation, although I am aware that many fellows now do go about thinking that the scourge of the Covids is over. I'm not altogether convinced. Thus, I have called upon the services of a passing necromancer, and that necromancer has been pleased to tell me all manner of things. And he did tell me that in the time yet to come, 
my country of England, which then will be collectively termed part of Great Britain, an expression I'm not at all familiar with, that areas of my England will be riven by hatred, that people will espouse views against those they do perceive not to belong here. It pains me a great deal, for there will never ever be peace in the realm as long as there are those who espouse such hatred. I do entreat you all, indeed, to live in that peace, unity and concord, to live together in harmony one with another and not to allow your mind to be swayed by such arguments as nationality, the origins and even the colour of one's skin. And so, my loyal subjects, perhaps more than ever, I do entreat you all to live in that peace, unity and concord, that harmony I do desire for all of my subjects. For you are to be assured, black lives matter.